when the ants rush by thousands into the flames of the burning ant hill, uh, they perish by hundreds to rescue their larvae, and they again obey a craving to save their offspring. They risk everything for the sake of bringing away the larvae that they have brought up with more care than many women bestow on their children. The ant, the bird, the marmot, the savage have read neither Kant, nor the fathers of the church, nor even Moses, and yet all have the same idea of good and evil. And if you reflect for a moment on what lies at the bottom of this idea, you will see directly that what is considered as good among ants, marmots, and Christian or atheist moralists is that which is useful for the preservation of the race, and that which is considered evil is that which is hurtful for race preservation. Not for the individual, as Bentham and Mill put it, but fair and good for the whole race. The morality which emerges from the observation of the whole animal kingdom may be summed up in the words, do to others what you would have them do to you in the same circumstances. The ants and termites have renounced the Hobbesian war, and they are better for it. Their wonderful nests, their buildings, uh, superior relative size to those of man, their paved roads and uh, overground vaulted galleries, their spacious halls and granaries, their corn fields uh, harvesting and malting of grain, their rational methods of nursing their eggs and larvae, and of building special nests for rearing the ephites, whom Linus so picturesquely described as the cows of the ants, and uh, finally their courage, uh, pluck, and uh, superior intelligence. All these are the natural outcome of the mutual aid which they practice at every stage of their busy and laborious lives. We must also recognize that the chief, uh, the fundamental feature of the life of many species of ants, is the fact and the obligation for every ant of sharing its food, already swallowed and partly digested, with every member of the community which may apply for it. Two ants belonging to two different species or to two hostile nests, when they occasionally meet together, uh, will avoid each other. But two ants belonging to the same nest or to the same colony of nests will approach each other, exchange a few movements with the antennae, and if one of them is hungry or thirsty, uh, and especially if the other has its crop full, it immediately asks for food. The individual thus requested never refuses. It sets apart its mandibles, takes a proper position, and regurgitates a drop of transparent fluid which is licked up by the hungry ant. Regurgitating food for other ants is so prominent a feature in the life of ants, and it so constantly recurs both for feeding hungry comrades and for feeding larvae, that Forel considers the digestive tube of the ants as consisting of two different parts, one of which the posterior is for the special use of the individual, and the other, the anterior part, is chiefly for the use of the community. If an ant which has its crop full has been selfish enough to refuse feeding a comrade, it will be treated as an enemy, or even worse. If the refusal has been made while its kinsfolk were fighting with some other species, they will fall back upon the greedy individual with greater vehemence than even upon the enemies themselves. And uh, if an ant has not refused to feed another ant belonging to an enemy species, it will be treated by the kinsfolk of the latter as a friend. That mode of life also necessarily resulted in the development of another essential feature of the life of ants, the immense development of individual initiative, which in its turn evidently led to the development of that high and uh, varied intelligence which cannot but strike the human observer. In some species, sociability is extended to the whole species, not only to a given society or to a nation, as we saw it with ants. When a farmer destroys a biscotcha burrow and buries the inhabitants under a heap of earth, for example, other biscotchas come from a distance to dig out those that are buried alive.